Today we get to talk about the triangle inequality theorem. Hooray! Triangle inequality! Triangle inequality theorem tells us a triangle can only exist. There's a lot of writing here, so if you want to type it, go for it. But if I write it, it takes a little longer. Y'all can keep up with me. A triangle only exists. Spell the words correctly, Sean. You knucklehead. A triangle only exists if the sum. Yo. Of the two smaller sides. Well, it could be 400. 400, it could be 400. So it only exists if the sum of our two smaller sides is greater than. the length of the third side. So it's got to be greater than the length of the third side. I should have pre-wrote that in there. Wow. Did y'all see that sweet motion right there? Tote lit fam. So, if you look at it, do we have enough room to draw a triangle somewhere? Let's uh, let's form us a little triangle down under. Say so this is eight, and we're gonna let that be side C. This will be four, and side A, and this will be five, and side B. So the theorem states, so this, this little drawing goes right up here with this theorem, guys. The theorem states that the two smaller sides, their sum must be greater than the length of the third. Okay, when I look at this triangle, what would be our smaller sides? A and B. Four, side four and side five. So our smaller sides would be A and B, right? Because A equals four and B equals five. And what's our largest side? It's C. So if we're doing this theorem, the sum of A and B, so A plus B must be greater than, y'all remember that little symbol? Yay, the little alligator mouse. The gator always eats the bigger number. Must be greater than C. If that is not true, then it's not possible for us to have a triangle, the links won't add up, links. So let's check it, A is four, B is five, is that greater than C, which is eight? Yeah, so four plus five is nine, greater than eight, so yes, that can be a triangle. So let's check out some of our examples. Two smaller sides must be greater than the length of the third. So we've got eight, 17, and 14. What are our smaller side lengths? Eight and 17, right? Those are our smaller lengths. 
They won't always be to the left or always be to the right. It's really which number's there. So it's the eight plus 17 is greater than 24. We'll get there. Eight plus 17 is 25. Is 25 greater than 24? Yes, if that's true, that means we can have a triangle. So, yep, we're good to have a triangle there. Number two, what's our two smaller sides? Three and three. Three and three are our smaller sides. So we add those together. The smaller side sum must be greater than the length of our third side. Three plus three is six. Is six greater than seven? No. So what can we conclude? Can't form a triangle. Yes, it will always be the sum of the two smaller must be greater than the length of the third. Always. All right, number three. What's my two smaller sides? 25 and 12. So 12 plus. 25 must be greater than 35. 12 plus 35 is 37. Is 37 greater than 35? Yes. So we've got ourselves a triangle. Uh, let's just go straight down to five. Okay, straight down to five. What are the lengths of my smaller sides? Which are my smaller lengths? 28 and 22. So in order for these three values to be a triangle, the sum must be greater than the length of the third. So 28 plus 22 is that greater than 50? 28 plus 22 is? 50. Wait. That's different. So what did our theorem state? What was our rule? It had to be what? Greater. It must be greater. Yes, sir. Is 50 greater than 50? No, it ain't not. So because it is not true, it form a triangle. No, sir. No. So you asked, what if you had the little greater than or equal to? Then yeah, that would have been fine. But what's our theorem tell us? It must be what? Greater than, not equal to. So we can't go with that. So that's pretty simple, right? Now, let's put a little pizzazz on it. What if you didn't know the length of the third side? And you're like, well, what could the range be? Okay. Yes. Yes, something. You're correct. Okay. So what is the range of numbers? What is something? A range of numbers is from the smallest it could be to the largest it could be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a compound inequality. Yes. Compound inequality. Where A will represent our difference. What's difference? What's difference? That's that's a quotient. What's the difference? Subtraction. And B will be our sum. 
How do we find the sum? Uh, addition. And then in the middle of that is going to be X, our third side. So this compound inequality, A is the bottom range it can be, so X must be greater than A. B is the top it can be, so X must be less than B. And you're like, what in the world just showed up? Okay, we're going to do it as two separate problems. Okay, so when we look at number, Wait, than it must be greater than A, but less than B. What's that? X must be, so X must be greater than A, but also less than B. You good? Yep. All right, so we need the difference of our two numbers, and we need the sum of our two numbers. So we're going to find our A, find our B, and then create our compound inequality. So the first thing is, we're going to take the difference. If we're talking side length, can that number ever be negative? Why not? What is a side length? Can, so basically, a side length is a measurement. Can you have a negative measurement? No. It's impossible. You can't have a negative distance. Because whether I slide 10 feet that direction or flip it and go 10 feet that direction, I have still covered 10 feet. Okay. So when I set up this when I set up this difference, what number should come first? Why? But wouldn't that make a negative? So why not put the bigger number first? Twenty two minus fourteen. The X is the value we're solving for. It must be greater than the difference. Yeah, why? Why if you have the difference that was like 22 or something, and then you had the other one that was smaller and not bigger, but it still equals the sum? So let's work through the problem and we'll address it. Okay? Because, okay? yes. Because, I mean, if A is 22 and it has to be. So A and B are not either one of our side links. A and B is the value we're going to solve for. Our side links are completely irrelevant. Right now we're finding the range of possible third links. So we're not saying, hey, this is the third side link. We're saying, hey, let's find out what it could possibly be. Now when we get to unit five, Six now, we'll be able to find missing side links, but right now all we're doing is, hey, what could it be? All right, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Um, will it always be the bigger number first? Yes, because you don't want to create a negative. All right, thank you. All right, so 22 minus 14. Eight. Okay. And lower part. And then B, we're going to take the sum. It doesn't matter which order we put them in. You can leave them 22 if you want to, but it don't matter. 14 plus 22. 36. So our range is the lowest number we could have is 8. And the highest number we could have is 36. And the reason is, now, is 8 plus 14, what's that give us? 8 plus 14. 22. Is 22 greater than 22? So can that form a triangle? What about 9? What about 9 plus 14? That would be 23, which then we can do what? We can make a triangle. So eight won't work, but everything above eight will. 
And in the same way, 36 is now our longest. 22 plus 14 is 36. Exactly. We're finding the value that it can lowest be and the value it can highest be. Correct. Yep. So, if, so that third value, that X, can be anywhere between 8 and 36. That's why I wanted to wait and like let you try to see it. So let's do it again. Let's find the difference. 11 minus 3. Is eight again. So that's our lower bound. What about B? What's our upper boundary? If we do difference on A, what are we going to do on B? Adam, so it's 11 plus 3. That gives me 14. So the lowest value I could get is must be greater than eight, and the highest value I can get must be less than 14. So X must be greater than eight, but less than 14. Isn't it math awesome? I really like it. It's my favorite. Yes. Do it one more time. So what in the Peter? So A. We're gonna do the difference. So 24 minus 7. The order that they present the numbers to us does not matter. 24 minus 7 is 17. So that's our lower boundary. B is our upper boundary, 24 plus 7. Yeah, let's call it that. Let's say A is always going to be our difference, our lower boundary. 31. So what would my compound inequality look like? X must be greater than 7, but less than 31. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So beautiful. Y'all want to do another one? Y'all feeling okay right there? We're okay? All right, let's go to the next page. Ordering angles. Okay, when we order our angles, angles of a triangle will always be put in order by comparing sides. Sides and angles have a direct relationship, meaning the smallest angle will always, always, always be opposite the shortest side or smallest side, whatever you want to say. Shortest, smallest, that's in bitterness. Oh, Peter, why did it do that? So the smallest angle will always be opposite the smallest side. And then, since I'm telling you it's direct, what do you think about the largest angle? It'll always be opposite the longest slash long largest side. It has absolutely no bearing where it is, no matter if the opposite angle will always be opposite the smallest side. Yeah, we're fixing to use that one, yep. So, you guys aren't dumb. Triangles have three angles. What about the middle angle? It'll always be opposite the what? Middle side. All right, so when we look at this figure, what is our smallest, was it one from least to greatest? 
What is our smallest side? What is it? BC, seven feet. Okay. Now, when we find opposite, we're looking across. And real, realistically, it can't touch the vertices. So which angle is seven opposite of, which angle is seven not touching? Hey. Okay. So if BC is my smallest side, A is my smallest angle. What's wrong? Okay. What is my next smallest? What is my middle angle? 10? This one went from least to greatest. Yep. It could. Yeah. So which vertice, which angle is opposite side AB? C. Basically, when I say the name AB, it's the letter that's not in the name. So opposite of AB is angle C. And then hopefully we can figure out the last one. But what is our longest side? 13. 13 is our longest side. So what does that tell me about B? It is the largest angle. Angles inside have direct relationships. This will always be true, no matter the triangle. Coach, does it matter which order you write it in? It does matter which order I write it in because it asks me to write them from least to greatest. Okay. <clears throat> Not for that. No. It won't get any more complicated than what we just did. So let's look at 17. Order the angles from least to greatest. So we're looking for our smallest side. What is our smallest side? 17. So which angle is opposite NP? Angle M. So angle M is our smallest. Which is our, meet, <coughs> our middle side? 20. So which angle is opposite M? M in angle P, and then our last one, 24 is now our longest side, which angle is opposite of MP? Angle in. Not too bad, right? Nah. All right, the one below it says order it from now, greatest to least, so biggest to smallest. So what's our largest side? BD. BD. At 11 kilometers, BD. Which angle is opposite of that? So angle C. What's our next longest side? What's our middle side? QD. And then which angle is opposite of that? Angle B. And then finally, that leaves us our smallest side. So that makes D our smallest angle. All right, well, what about ordering sides? Now, instead of putting the angles in order, let's put our sides in order. Do you think the relationship's going to change? No. no. No, it stays the exact same. The smallest angle or the smallest side will always be opposite the smallest angle. So we're going to have to add up some stuff to 
Don't steal the sign. So the smallest side will always be opposite the smallest angle. And the largest side will always be opposite of the largest angle. It is still a direct relationship. They're not going to try to trick us. In fact, if they tried to trick us, we would be able to thump them and know, hey, that ain't how that works, jabroni. That ain't how it works, homie. They're not going to try to trick us. But you could thump them if they did. All right, so he said, Coach, what is, are they ever going to just leave an angle blank? <laughs> yeah, they're going to do that. So we need to find that missing angle first. How would we find our missing angle? Yep, so 42 plus 103 equals what, ma'am? 180. I'm listening. Angle, thank you. I just get stuck in talking sometimes. It is. Say la vie. We all make mistakes. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So the measure of F plus, thank you, brother. 42 plus 103, drop kicked. If somebody's going to take you out of here, it's going to be me. So 145, is that right? Yes. Subtract 45 from both sides. So the measure of angle F is? 35. Good. Okay. So it says order them from least to greatest. So let's identify our smallest angle. What's our smallest angle? F. F is our smallest. We know that the smallest angle is always opposite the smallest side. So what's our smallest side? Yep. DE. What's our next one? 42 is our next angle. So our next smallest or our next largest, depending if you're a glass full person is. DF. Which makes our longest side what? EF. Now let's go back to last unit when I told you guys, how do we identify the hypotenuse? How do we identify it? It was always where? Opposite the right angle. Does that still hold up? Our hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and will always be opposite the right angle. Is that still true? How come? No idea. Right angle measures what? 90 and never changes, which means the other two angles, their sum has to be what? When added together, they have to be what? The whole thing is 180. 90 is taken by that right angle. What about the other two added together? It has to be what? 90. Will those two ever be greater than 90? No. So that's why I say the hypotenuse is always the longest side of a right triangle, because it'll always be opposite the 90 degree angle. All right, let's do one of these. We need to find angle K first. How do we find angle K? Triangle sum theorem, great answer. So 31 plus 57 equals 180. 31 and 57 is 88. We subtract 88 from both sides. So the measure of angle K is 
92. Great job. How does it want us to order our sides? Least to greatest. So the smallest side is always opposite of the smallest angle. So which side is opposite 31? KL. Our next smallest angle will be 57. Which side is opposite 57? JK. Just kidding. And then final question. Could you also write KJ? Would it matter? No. Okay. And then lastly, we've got 92. Opposite 92 is? No, it's not going to matter. I'll even do it for you just in case. All right, now, I do got to get a little tougher on you. It, it, it is all right because you guys are rock stars. Okay, but I do got to get a little tougher. So let's throw some real algebra in there. Oh, bruh. Do y'all remember these from Algebra 1? No. Yes, these were there. All right. So when solving inequalities, it's just like solving for an equation, linear equation. However, there's a couple rules that we got to watch out for. What on earth is it meaning when it says watch out for flippers? Like dolphin flippers? Like flip-flops? Who remembers? What is there? What's the two special rules in inequalities? What happens? If you multiply, multiply, or divide by a negative, what happens? Multiply or divide by a negative, it flips the sign. Meaning if it was greater than, it now becomes less than. If it was less than, it now becomes greater than. It flips the sign. Is it? Nah. So if we multiply or divide by a negative, it's going to flip our sign. And that's only multiplying or dividing by a negative, not adding or subtracting, not multiplying a positive number into a negative number. It's literally only if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative. So let's see, number one, our ultimate goal still remains the same. We're still trying to isolate our variable. We still want to get X by itself. So for number one, what do y'all want to do first? It's just like if it was an equal sign. Nothing changes. It's just an e the only thing weird is that if we multiply or divide by a negative, it flips the sign. Only when we do it by a negative. So we're going to subtract two x from both sides. So what's that give me? Three X minus 18 greater than three. Notice we subtracted. Technically we moved the negative over, but subtraction does not flip our sign. Okay. What do y'all want to do next? We're going to add 18 to both sides to get rid of it. Absolutely. So we get 3x is greater than 21. Last step. I buy 3. So x is greater than 7. No? Why would I flip it? 
but it must be divided or multiplied by a negative. Sometimes I am. So, Coach, yeah. it's only when you do X is when you uh, would not flip, or is when the flippers apply? One more time. It's like only when you're trying to find X is when it applies. Only when we're dealing with inequalities does it apply. Okay. If we're not dealing with inequalities, it doesn't apply. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. No. Stop. All right, number two. Let's see. There might be a flipper. There might be a flipper. Let's see what happens. What do y'all want to do first? You want to add 15? Okay. Do you like dealing with your constants before your variables? That's fine. Doesn't matter what you do first, as long as you get to the same spot. You can do whatever you want to. It's your math problem. As long as you do it the right way. So we get 8x plus 52 equals greater than, thank you, greater than 10x. Oh, you avoided the flipper. Gabby avoided the flipper. Look at that. Subtract both sides by 8x. If you don't deal with negative x variables, you won't have a flipper. If you avoid negative variables, then you never have to worry about a flipper, do you? Gabby found a trick. Oh, yeah. So we get 22 is greater than 2x. Divide both sides by 2. Come on now. Divide both sides by 2. So x must be less than 11. All right, we're going to do the next one. So we have a flipper. Just because I want you to see a flipper. I want you to have a flipper. It is. Let's find out. So we're going to subtract 14x from both sides. Yay. Yay. We subtract 14x from both sides. Now we got negative 5x. Yeah, we do. We do. Minus 26 is greater than negative 40. And we get a decimal on this one. How much fun is that? Go! Uh, wow. Why, Coach? Because math is fun. So add 26. You could avoid decimal. You couldn't avoid decimals here. Oh, the flipper. Okay. Right, guys. If you could avoid the. You could what? Sure. All right. So negative 5x is greater than negative 14. Here we go. We are dividing by a negative. It doesn't. It's a decimal. When we divide by a negative, the flipper comes into play. Flip, 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 Adelphia. So instead of it being x is greater than, it's going to flip it. And now it's going to become x is less than 2.8. So if we go back and look at the way Gabby did the last one, right? She avoided the flipper by dealing with only positive x's. Yeah, if we would have moved the 9 that direction, we wouldn't have flipped. But if we move the 9 that direction, x is already less than. So it doesn't have to flip. So now let's take our triangle sum, our <laughs> let's take our triangle inequality theorem. You're right in front of me, guy. I don't need you to tell anything. And we're going to 
find the possible ranges. So we're going to take our two smaller sides, and their sum must be greater than. The problem is, we don't know which one's the two smaller side. Yeah, so how, oh, no. We've got to do it all three times. It's okay. We could do it another day, but we don't have any days. We already went through that. So the first one, we're going to go A, B. We could say we did it and then not do it, and then you go to the ACT and you struggle, and it's my fault. No, no, we didn't. We could. Yeah. We could So we're going to do A B plus B C must be greater than A C. We're going to go A B plus A C must be greater than B C. And then finally, BC plus AC must be greater than AB. Maybe. Got three different ways to do it. The best part is only two of them will work and one of them will give us a negative. Thank you, Roachin Shake. All right, so let's do some uh, let's do some math. What's the value of AB? Four X plus twenty five. You don't have to. What's the value of BC? Three X. And then that must be greater than what? We're putting all three, all three values get to come into play. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Woo! Stop. And then 9x minus 5. <laughs> what? It did? What? 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 Coach, it just stopped sharing. I know it's coming. And then greater than 9x minus 5. Not that bad. There isn't one because we're doing inequalities today. So we're going to combine like terms on the left. There is an answer. There's a range of answers. So 7x plus 23 is greater than 9x minus 5. You want to avoid flippers? All right, let's avoid flippers. Subtract 7x from both sides. Get all the fun out of it, avoiding the flippers. No. Nope. Yep. Nope. Nope. You're wrong, Henry. Actually, so. no, actually. Twenty-three no. is greater than. No, I don't think you are. Nine no. x minus five, or two x. Sorry. No. Kenny, you you didn't get a point. You don't even have a forehead. Twenty-eight is greater than two x. No. No. Divide both sides by two. So x is. X must be less than 14. That's our upper. Could X equal 14? No. Sometimes. Flipper? Nope. We still get X is less than 14. All right. Next one. Let's go again. Wow. So we gotta find the other two. Find the other we need to find the value of all three because that'll give us our range. Because one of them's not gonna work because it can't form a triangle. All right, AB is 4x plus 25. 
Coffee. I got Bojangles. Uh, AC 9X minus 5. And that must be greater than 3X minus 2. Again, we're going to combine like terms. So we get 13x plus 20. Stop, son. Is greater than 3x minus 2. Subtract 20. Because y'all don't like the flipper. Yes. Because it's not the value of our third side. Wow. 13x is greater than 3x minus 40. Subtract 3x from both sides. So 10x is greater than negative 22. Divide both sides by a positive 10. We are dividing by a positive, so there is no flipper. It's only if we were to divide by a negative. So x must be greater than negative 2.2. Can a side length be negative? So that's not our answer. Yep. And then last one, BC plus AC. BC is 3X minus 2. Plus AC is 9X minus 5. That's greater than uh, 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 4 plus 25. Combine like terms on the left. Yes. Yes. Great. Super. Yes. So 12x minus 7 is greater than 4x plus 25. Subtract 7. Add 7, just kidding. Is that what you're saying? Wait for It's my fault. So we get 12x is greater than 4x plus 32. What's wrong? Is that right? Minus 4x. Minus 4. So 8x must be greater than 32. Divide both sides by 8. Is there a flipper? No. How come? Not divided by a negative, so x must be greater than 4. Yes. So what's our range? It must be what? It must be greater than 4, but less than 14. 